Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the unboxing of a new little project I've got here. Uh, thanks to Unique UK, uh, we have the up and coming cage system. So let's have a look, see what we get. Nice little core flute container box. We've got it in here. Open it out. So inside we've got the manual, one uh, group of carbon fiber rods, another one, a couple of ends. Alright, and some more ends. Some plugs of some sort and the top and up and over. Looks like everything, so we'll get rid of that now. Okay, so looking through the manual here. What have we got? Um, Alright. We've got a top cross joint, the two leg clips, four leg inserts, six motor arms, and a toothpick. I like that, it's included apparently on page 14. Uh, two side rods, four front and rear rods, and six outer ring rods, and three top rods. So let's just check we've got all those. There's our three top rods. And we've got now uh, two side rods there, they've got little red marks on them, looks like it. And we should have uh, four, one, two, three, four of those, yep, and then six of the outer rings, one, two, three, four, five, six, good, everything's there. Um, uh, motor arm clips, one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect, and four leg plugs, two leg clips, and an up and over, perfect, all right, let's get the drone in and put it on. Okay, going by the manual, uh, we should put our leg clips on first, so we've got to take off our legs and slide on our, our, uh, our joints. So. Alright. I presume I said once we put these on, they can stay on the drone uh, all the times, so that will be handy so we don't have to take them on and off. So let's have a look here, we'll probably put that down like this and up and over that was easy put them back in just using a small phillips head for this one there's very few uh, tools actually needed for your typhoon to do the repairs uh, a fairly decent uh, micro phillips head uh, a i think a 1.5 2 and a 2.5 mil allen key and that's pr pretty much it. Okay, that one off. And we slide this one on. You can see there, um, they've actually got nice little uh, grooves and stuff. They're very well molded. They, they're very light. They're definitely not like a 3D print. Um, if they are, they're, yeah, they're a very high quality 3D print anyway, but super light. They're super, super light, so. All right, put that on there like that. So once these are on, we won't have to take those off um, to put it away in our cases, um, which will be good because we don't have to dismantle everything every time if we don't have to. So the least amount of dismantling is always going to be better. Okay, all right. Thus end the screws. Next it says to do the uh, leg inserts, all right? So the leg inserts, if we go to page 14, we've got a toothpick. Uh, hasn't been used, which is a bonus. So let's get that out. And we're going to put a hole in through the end of our rubber leg. Do that with this other side here and through the center Two holes. all right a couple of leg inserts there's four of these plugs go down into the actual uh, leg assemblies 
Looks like they have given um, the ability to screw them on at some stage. Um, maybe they just did that just in case, but um, yeah, obviously they've got it. So you could screw them onto the legs, but they go in there. That one was pretty tight. This one's a little bit looser. We'll see what happens if we put this on this side. That's tight. Yeah, so those two had a little bit of difference in them, um, very marginally. Put our rubbers back on. Okay, all right, done. Let's do the other side. Okay, pushing those all the way through. And the other one. Okay. Two more leg inserts into the end of the tubes. Rubbers back on. Done. All right. So for those ones, we're going to use um, the, looks like they're the longer um, uh, rods. So there's two different, or three different lengths of rods. You've got the shortest ones are for the ones coming up from the sides to the uh, left and right arms. And there they've got little red tabs on them. Okay, that's those two. And then we got um, basically 10 the same uh, of these other ones. So we should be able to basically put those in now through our hole, if we've done our hole good enough with our toothpick. And they lock into place because that little insert we've put in the bottom of the um, uh, the bottom of the leg obviously has a stopper on it okay so there that's our tubes coming out the end there well, a bit of flex on those as in quite stiff all right grab some arms I'll continue reading the manual all right so we've done uh, insert those four great done that Next, we're going to clip on the six motor arms. We're going to end up with this big hill like this. So this is a, a first. I presume you put it on there like that and then click it over. Yep, well, that worked well. Uh, Unique also made a, uh, for the original Typhoon H, a prop, um, let's just call it a prop guard. It's not a real cage. Um, it was pretty lightweight um, but lightweight in in what it would actually do um, it was yeah budget whereas this definitely seems um, really well made if you have a look at the the joints again there is some flex in them okay but they are um, yeah super light so actually let's have a quick look at that All right, so we've got each one of those arms is 24 grams or let's have a look at it in ounces for you guys. 0.05 pound, there you go, whatever that means. But um, yeah, 25 grams anyway, 24 grams. The top piece, we're looking at that one. Uh, we'll tear that off. Doesn't register, so what we'll do is put 24 back on there. So we're 24, add that one. So we're looking at another eight grams for the top. So uh, my minimum record of that um, weight is 10 grams. Okay, so we've got all those on, except for this last one. Okay, there we are, all on. So, next thing on our list, after we've done all six, which we've done here, is to start inserting the six uh, outer rings. Uh, the tick is that they are all the way pushed right into the center. Uh, cross is don't tick and push them all the way into the center. All right, so let's see if we can uh, adjust this around a bit and get one of these okay so I'm pushing them in and they do actually stop in there all right so that's good and then we put 
that went in around there. So that's that's it. That was pretty easy. Um, let's see if we can zoom out a bit here, see if we can see anything more. This will certainly go in um, quite easily. So what I might actually do is we will take off these far ones and then I'll stand it up. Okay. So certainly um, coming on and off was, was just as easy. All right. But, um, okay. There we go. Push it down in there. And then around and in. All right. Well, that went in really easily. There's our cage system so far. All right. So if we have a look at, um, let's pick this uh, front right leg. Okay. We've got uh, in here, there's actually a hole in underneath here. So we can put that up in there. And that's the leg assembly coming through there. Our red ones, we can now use in the side here. All right. And then up and into that assembly there. Okay. So real easy to put together. You're probably looking uh, after initial setups. Um, oh, look, I would say probably do it in a minute to a minute and a half all up but um, there's one complete side done of the drone there okay you can see here the uh, back left the center and the front right okay we're now going to put the uh, the top pieces on I'll just do this other arm at the front here since it's already plugged in there you go all right so let's do a um, let's do an up and over. Now we've got one up and over here we can actually do because um, I've only got the one side on. So here's the uh, the longest pieces. They're 880 um, centimeters approximately, uh, 880 millimeters I should say, 88 centimeters. Um, and we basically feed these through uh, right all the way through uh, this cro top cross piece. So we put those in all the way through. You might want to get a bit of um, white paint or something or other. And once you get that in the center, because that needs to be right in the center of these, uh, these arms, is to actually make a, uh, make a mark on the rods so that you just know where to go up to. Um, but the other way you can tell is one of the side pieces uh, they're basically twice the length of these these pieces here. So if you uh, hold that there and there, that will give you the right um, distance to pull it based on that center point here. Okay. All right, so here we go, got it up and over, and we're now going to grab, um, I think I'm gonna have to put those other back pieces on after all. But anyway, we'll go for this one first. So in the side, and up and over into the other side. Okay, that's it. Into the front, and to this one. All right. So basically, you should end up with this uh, this pattern here directly over top of. If we tilt it this way, uh, over top of the center of the top of the drone. So if we put these arms back on now, now I've got to tilt it up. So that's me doing it one-handed. They are, they do go on very easily. You just hook it over the uh, the uh, you hook those over the top lip there of the motor there, over like that lip there, and then you push them up and clip them over. Right. So I've just put on those other top two now. Okay. And the bottom one's back in. Okay, there you go. And as I said, just to make sure it was in the center. Yep, okay, that's it. So that was um, 
that's the extent of putting it together. As I said, it's not rocket science. It is very basic, but um, it seems it seems really sturdy. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to flex at all, which is good. So definitely the um, the build quality is really good. The actual joints themselves and these unions uh, seem nice and sturdy. So over time, um, you're hoping that they should uh, not um, you know, give in or fail, which we don't want to see. So turning the drone around, trying not to hit my camera. All right, we've got the another leg one here. And coming up and in. And lastly, the uh, the last two um, ones coming out of the legs of the drone here. So, and that's it, that's a full cage. All right. So, what can you do with that now? Let's just move this back a bit. Okay, looking up. All right, so there's the, that's the pinnacle up the top of the cage there. So looking down on top of that, that should be over the center. So you can see there that that's not over the center. Okay, so we're just gonna gotta sort of adjust those, pulling them left and right, left and right, and get that over the center. That's why I think having a mark on here, uh, even putting a bit of tape around it so that it would limit uh, how far that's gonna slide in on one side, might even help to get that into the uh, position where you want to have it. All right. So we've got a um, bit uneven in the way it's sitting down there at the moment. I think the pads are a bit flat on one side. And so some of the pads, these are older pads, um, they're not giving me a sitting level on the actual table. So, but other than that, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, how much can that take? Good question. Not really sure. What can we sit on it? How about a MacBook? Oh yeah. Um, what else? We can put on it. Um, so we'll just weigh that MacBook. So we're looking at, that was two kilos worth of MacBook uh, that I just sat on top of it, and that was fine. So the drone could certainly be supported upside down on top of itself, uh, and it's not gonna crush in on it, which is good. Um, batteries. I'm sure this is not what it's intended for, but um, there's a two kilo laptop and four batteries. Can't handle it. So that's two kilos with his laptop and another kilo in batteries, and it's can't handle that. So that's three kilos. Let's go down to two and a half. It's going to support just on two and a half kilos. So, yeah, so the rigidity, rigidity of that um, seems quite firm. So that's good. All right, well, that's basically it for a quick unboxing of the cage. Uh, obviously, flying is the next one. Um, so hopefully get to do that soon and get to bump into some stuff. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh, just a quick follow-up. So in the previous video, I'd said about how uneven it was. I've just, um, when I read, put it in the second time, it seemed to have sturdied it up, so my legs aren't uneven on the bottom now. Not too sure what it was that I'd done, but certainly by reinserting them again, uh, this, the craft is sitting level on the table where it wasn't before, it was rocking around. So that's definitely fixed that up. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've actually um, broken my toothpick, okay? So what I actually did with the toothpick is I broke it in half and broke off a piece about that big, and stuck it down through a hole in the top of this top piece here. So why did I do that? In the pack, you get this, okay? It's an 880 mil long 
single piece of the carbon fiber rod that goes across here from left to right in the three locations. For me, with our Pelican cases, I can't fit this in. It just won't fit in. So what I've done is, um, from another set, I've used six individual pieces of 440 mil lengths. Now those pieces are the same lengths that you see around the outsides there, and also up the front and up the back. They're 440 mils. The pieces across the top are 880. So they don't fit in my cases, the 440 do. So what I've done is taken six 440 mil length pieces, so half the length of the up and overs, and fed them through this center piece. Now to stop them from moving left and right, I broke off the toothpick and jammed it through the center. And that means that now that doesn't slide, okay? It is definitely right smack bang in the center. So I sort of did that before with the video um, and I weighed, you saw me put a weight on there of two and a half kilos original with the 880 mil full lengths running through this. And I only got to about two kilos or just over two kilos before it started to give way with the other one. But that wasn't a really good test because what happened is to get those four, uh, those six pieces in, I actually took off um, this front piece here and I took off the four leg supports. So there was no support coming underneath the drone and there was no supports at the front and the back of the drone. So now I've got it done correctly. So let's do the load up test again. So here's my two kilo MacBook Pro. Here is the one battery. That's now two and a half kilos. Here is another battery. Okay, so two and a half it's going to start to, uh, sorry, three kilos, it's going to start to collapse down. So at two and a half kilos, but that was the same as the uh, 880. All right. And, okay, it's two and a half kilos, two kilo MacBook Pro and a, uh, a Typhoon H520 battery. So I'll put those down here on the scale. And you can see there it is. 2512, so two and a half kilos of weight being put on it in this shorter piece area. So if I pull these out, you can see here, I've now got a short piece. The other thing I found was actually easier to, to, um, to put together with it this way because I sort of put these in the, the spokes in first and this doesn't slide around. So I know it's centered and I know I can just push in that arm, that arm, that arm, that arm all the way around and this isn't gonna move. So to me, I think in revision two from uh, Unique, I'd suggest they do something similar to this. Instead of having uh, this big thick piece that is, um, you can see if I pull it out here. Okay, so the actual plastic piece they supply with is, see it's the three spaghetti tubes stuck on top of each other, okay? My suggestion, Unique, is that they make that a single, uh, single layer, multi six spoke spoke, uh, that way, I said, with a center hard core and all these just push into it. And I think I said you'll find that it's just as strong as having the through pieces. It will decrease packaging, but more importantly for us as users is it will fit into our Pelican cases because the maximum length we've got is only 440. So we'd have 16 of these 440 mil pieces and we'd have two of these 410 pieces, which are the pieces that go down um, into the uh, legs uh, from the sides here. Okay, so that's my suggestion. Other than that, look, I think it works really well. Um, but yeah, a little slight modification. Using my toothpick as my spacer, I'll probably find a little uh, light plastic bung or something or other to push down in there to do it a bit more permanently. Um, or yeah, if I don't, I'll 3D print up something myself that is just the six spoke spoke. But I, I like the, the quality of their stuff is quite good. Um, so I'd probably prefer to uh, maintain that as opposed to using my own 3D print material. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.